Hi guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to do a disassembly of this SLR B15 rifle from DITAC. Hi guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy my video today, please do like and subscribe because you will be really helping me out. Uh, so hopefully you've seen the unboxing of this little beast uh, in one of my previous videos. If not, I'll put a link down below. Go check it out and have a look. And uh, today, as I usually do, I'm going to do the disassembly just to have a look at what's going off inside this piece of kit. So we're going to start with the front end. I've had people sort of asking and commenting, uh, particularly to just have a look inside the front rail and everything, just to see what's going off in there. So on the front, uh, on the muzzle brake there, we've got a little grub screw. So I'll just make sure I've got the right, uh, oh, too big. There we go. Make sure I've got the right bit. We'll get that off. So there is a grub screw holding that on there and it should just be, and it is, it's an anti-clockwise thread and it just comes off nice uh, clean tidy threads so yeah that's looking pretty cool and decent that's that's really weighty and heavy so that gives us if you can see that clearly that's the end of the barrel literally coming to the end of the outer barrel uh, just stopping short of uh, the uh, muzzle brake and that's a 6.10 uh, 6.01 barrel even don't get those confused very different uh, measurements so next we've got some uh, bolts here, not too big, too little, and uh, we're going to undo these two bolts and that should then flip that over, it's going to release these little bolts here, so they are really snug in there, I do like the uh, SLR styling, that's quite cool, so just to clarify, the little uh, rounded off part there, sat almost as though it's going into the barrel and on the other side it looks very much the same so it's like curved to match the uh, almost like the outer barrel but it's actually the, the uh, nut inside that holds the outer barrel to the upper receiver so I'll remove the other one and what this should do in theory fingers crossed fairs is it should release the res unit and allow us to slide it off so just to confirm the bolts came out from the right hand side as you're looking down the gun and it does just slide off there is the centralizer that went in to keep it centralized and that just sat in there like that it's just a little little round thing with a peg in there and it centralizes it you then got a big relatively standard looking uh, nut there I'm guessing that will just come off with some uh, adjustable uh, grips to get hold of that, get rid of that. But that is a nice, solid, I do like that outer barrel, quite nice and uh, solid, nice and tidy. It all is very, very well built. But that ultimately is the upper coming apart. We'll just get those out of the way and I'll reassemble that later. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap this pin out. At first I thought it was, um, it had got like a head in it, but it's not, it's just a tap out one, but they've shaped it, that's quite a nice feature actually. They've shaped it so it's easier to put something like a screwdriver in. Oh, one, one light tap. I bet I could have pushed that out possibly with my finger. It's come out and that should now. He says famous last words, but I've not pulled it all the way out. Hmm, appears to be stuck a little bit. So, let me have a look. Is it just being pedantic? That should, bear with me a second. I bet it's linked to the back body pin as well. So I'll push the back body pin out if I can. I can't necessarily see any lugs, but I'll release it just the same, just to see. Now, that is quite interesting. Well, we'll take the stock off and we'll figure this out from a different direction. Now, I have noticed that that has come loose. That's fine too, I can tighten that up. I've got, um, an airsoft armourer's wrench uh, 
knocking about in my tool bag. There's the wiring. We'll uh, get this off. So that is, there is a Phillips head, but it's got the ability to take a, a, a flathead piece in there, but you're gonna obviously need quite a long screwdriver for that, which I will grab now. So there's definitely movement in there. I've got my long screwdriver now. Um, so we'll drop, not quite fully unscrewed. Until I feel the click. There we go. Drop that out, in fact. Drop the screw in the holder out. And then slide that out. Now I would say that looks a little bit like no, I bet it's just the connectors. I was going to say I think there might be a chip in there, but it's not. I'm uh, just getting confused. So never mind. We'll move on anyway. So um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to release the quick change spring. So hopefully, let's see if I can get one of these to do the job for me. Right. So, it's quite a thick, chunky one. Nope. That is that size. Too big. Put this in there. Right, there we go. So, just release that quarter turn and it released spring out so I can see down into the back of the gearbox there and uh, I still don't understand why this upper doesn't want to let go um, aha now I do basically the upper is under a little bit of compression to come forward so the pin had gone into it I'll just uh, get that back into position so I'll drop that down it does want to come off but just to watch out the pin hadn't actually come out all the way just rotate that back so as the pin comes out it got to there and I was thinking it had come all the way out and as you can probably ooh, knocking it you can see that it's come off at an angle so I pulled a little bit we got there in the end and that released it lift the dust cover and there it goes so we'll uh, lift the barrel out uh, Nothing overly special looking, but it is a 6.01. It is spotlessly clean down there, I can confirm, which is nice. It's good to see them uh, coming uh, spotlessly clean. This should, in general, be identical to a normal M4 style disassembly, so it should be relatively easy. I am a little bit disappointed that the um, mag release is one of the old fashioned where you have to push the button in and then you have to, I'm going to have to remove, remove the bolt release first, which is pin based. So I'll just put that in there and there is the pin. I'm sure you can replace this with uh, any one of the uh, aftermarket uh, mag releases. So that can come out now. So I just push the pin out and it came out. So now to get the mag catch out, we push the button in and we basically just unscrew the mag catch until it springs out of the button on the other side. I'll just, oh, there we go. So it just, it's actually threaded into the button. I mean, it is solid, solid and it is stable, but it's also a pain in the backside at the same time. Uh, I'm not always a big fan of these. Uh, that said, you could replace it easily, like I was saying, with any of the loads of available ones for extended, you know, my um, Ronin Recon's got one of the extended button ones. I can just, I can reach it from all the way back here instead of having to go all the way forward, which if you're in a firefight, it's quick and easy just to tap the paddle, and the mag comes out. So next we're gonna to go to the bottom of the pistol grip. I'm gonna uh, pop this off and get to the base plate. There we go, that is incredibly stiff to get out, which is reassuring really that it's gonna protect your base plate. Does, bizarrely, it does give you access though to uh, access the motor adjustment screw. It's just a pain to uh, get it out of the way. So that did need a lot of pressure to get that out of there. Ooh, that's unusual. That was the base plate. I wasn't expecting that at all. 
So that slides in and positions the motor with the motor adjustment screw, and that was the actual base plate, hence why it took so much effort to get that out there. I wasn't expecting that at all. So there is your motor. So let's disconnect. So the red went to the front, and the black was at the back, like you would find in a, a typical uh, Airsoft M4 or AR variant. Pop that off and lift that out. There is fairly standard looking motor, it's nothing special, there's no branding on it whatsoever, but it turns over the gearbox nicely, so we're happy with that. Down the pistol grip then, we've got the usual two screws in there. Uh, on this occasion, they've actually gone, usually, you find the mounting screws in the pistol grip are usually at the bottom right and the top left as you're looking down the gun like that. On this one, they've gone bottom left and top right instead of top left and bottom right. So, get that out there. I do like this pistol grip, it is really, really, really comfortable. Wiggle that out, pull those wires out. Obviously, don't tug on them too hard because you don't want to damage the, uh, the cable, the shrouding, or anything like that. So, we're nearly into the gearbox. I'm guessing I'm going to have to remove these to get the pin underneath. Let's just see actually first. Yes, so next bit. Find the next hex key. There we go, or Allen key. Remove that. That lifts off. There is our pin. Does it just pull out? Take the other side off it, put that to one side. I'm going to keep these separate. I think they're both generically the same, but you're never sure, so I'm going to keep them separate so I know which one is which. And then the pin does just loosely pull out, simple as that. Put that to one side. And now the gearbox, he does with a bit of jigging and poking there we go and now it comes to do and to do and there is our gearbox now that's looking pretty solid um, even though it says die tag suspicious it looks a little bit like a a seamer in all honesty it looks sort of very similar in terms of quality and things but you can see you've got your bearing based uh, bushings there so if you don't remember from previous videos that's fine basically th these are like bearings that you would get in like a wheel on a car or a rollerblade or something like that and as the gear spins inside these help it to spin smoother faster quicker obviously helping you to increase your rate of fire and things like that uh, they can be at times uh, prone to failure in terms of um, obviously braking and things like that because it is a, a moving mechanical part uh, but generally the ones we're getting now are significantly better and, and stronger it's just something to be aware of um, that you know is in there so these are all phillips head screws there's not i'm not worried about compression in there although that said i am going to have to separate these two gears from the body these are the ambidextrous gears so that just frictions up and out from the other side and they connect like that there's like a little d-shape so they can only go together one way that's fine get that out of the way right so finish removing these and we'll see what's inside it's a good idea to line the screws up in the right order in which you took them out and in a rough positioning so you know where they've all come from that way then you know when you print it back together where each of the screws went and that it's going back in the right place because sometimes there might be a slight difference length and that could mean the difference between damaging something and not damaging something just a, a helpful hint of the day so i've got all the main screws out but uh, what makes me think more and more it's, it's possibly a, a seam that's uh, built built it for them is this little thing here i mean it's very solidly built so far but this little screw in here seems to be one that i see commonly on SEMA type gearboxes so i'll just drop that out so that little screw connects to the safety lever the physical cutoff of the trigger so i'm just going to lift that out of the way it's obviously under no compression because we've taken the spring and the spring guide out and there we are inside the gearbox so it's got the daub of uh, blue grease in there which 
says to me, I think this is a SEMA that has been built for DITAC. Um, you've then got, I do like the DITAC trigger. I mean, it's, it's a very well gearbox, don't get me wrong. Don't think I'm, I'm bad-mouthing it, I'm really not. Uh, that is uh, a fairly standard sort of um, Chinese-looking gearbox. So you've got a fairly standard gear set. I assume they're like XYT gear set. There's your anti-reversal latch that stops the gears turning backwards. Um, I do think possibly the plastic of the air nozzle and the tappet plate. Sorry, that's my uh, dishwasher finishing. Uh, how middle class of me. Um, so I do think that that is not the strongest of plastic on the air nozzle and the tappet plate and possibly maybe one of the first things to break, particularly if you're running a high FPS system, um, like a, as a DMR, which this you know looks like it should work as. Then you've got a fairly standard looking piston, plastic teeth, uh, from the little bit of shooting, there's no wear or tear on there at all, and then obviously your front metal tooth. In terms of air compression, it's okay compression, it's not amazing, but it's okay, there is some compression there. Uh, so obviously we know it's doing um, about 340 FPS, which is absolutely perfect to run it anywhere in the UK. So we'll just take another closer look. So a fairly standard um, looking system there. Decent enough quality wiring. It does look like it's possibly been nipped a little bit there. Oh no, it's thread lock. It's okay, it's thread lock. Um, there is what looks like a little retainer there to keep your wire down and out of the way of the motor that's quite a nice little feature in there uh, but fairly standard looking everything's you know pretty decent looks like they've had a good bash at shimming it it uh, spins quite nicely it does sound nicely like it's turning over really nicely and things like that so there is the inside of a DITAC for you SLR B15 carbine hope you found this helpful please do like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.